Hey dolls and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, this is part 6 of my series testing out the best selling foundations at Sephora. And today we are going to do a review and wear test of the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Finish Longwear Liquid Foundation. I chose this foundation because there's a lot of reviews on this foundation. It, it actually has 14.9 thousand reviews on the Sephora's website. Out of those reviews, it got 4 out of 5 stars rating. This retails for 56 Canadian dollars for 30 ml, which I think is more on the pricier side compared to the other long wearing high end foundations at Sephora. When it comes to its claim, it claims to have an oil free, lightweight foundation that masterfully diffuses the line between makeup and skin for undetectable coverage. Its hydrating formula is long wearing and photo friendly and won't cause flashback. So let's jump onto the try on. I'm going to prime my skin with the NYX Plump Right Back Primer as usual. So this foundation is water-based, so this primer is also water-based. And my skin concern is that I have oily T-zone, dry on some other parts, so I have combination skin. I also have hyperpigmentation on the top of my cheeks, and I have big pores on the side of my cheeks. I did something unusual for my brows today. I used the Anastasia Brow Wiz to like laminate my brows. Do you like it guys? It's so hard because I have thick brows that doesn't really want to go wherever I want it to go. But how do you like them? <laughs> I think they're okay. Anyways. So on my right side, I'm going to use my brush and let's do two pumps of the foundation. Its consistency is quite in the middle. It's not too creamy and not too liquid. It's dripping down on my hand but really slowly. So let's see if this shade match me. This is the shade Light Beige, which is described to be for light with neutral undertones. Let's start here start covering my broken capillaries for something that is for neutral skin tone I find that this shade is quite orange it's actually not neutral I find that this is very warm it's matching my neck perfectly though so I think we're fine it doesn't have any drag and it's applied very thinly on the face two pumps is already gone with just half of my face but it's actually giving me a medium coverage. Usually the other foundations that I have tried, I only need one pump for, or one and a half for half of my face, but this, you need two pumps for sure. It has a mild scent, but very, very mild. So I think if you are sensitive to scent, you're still okay with this foundation. Now that I'm looking at my camera screen, I actually think that it's a perfect match. Like I can really see that my face is matching my neck. So this is the side with a foundation and the side without. So, so far, it is true to its claim. It's very skin-like, very natural looking, very light on the face even though this is already two pumps. Yeah, it feels like I have very moisturized skin. So let's go to the other side. I'm going to use my sponge. Let's start with one pump. Oh yeah. So with this, it's better to use a sponge to get that coverage. Usually for very liquid foundation, I prefer using a sponge because, especially my airbrush sponge, because it doesn't soak up the product. For very gel-like consistency like the Sephora one, you want to use a brush with that. When it comes to coverage, I think that it can actually give you a full coverage because I don't see a lot of my hyperpigmentation anymore. And the redness is also gone and it also covered the broken capillaries that I have on the side of my face. So let's see if this is a good base and let's try putting on my bronzer. And even if I had to really maneuver the bronzer on top of this, foundation the foundation actually did not move not too dewy it looks very natural very light on the face it's still a little bit tacky so i am going to finish my eye makeup and then we'll put some powder to set this foundation and see 
if this would also not move when I put on my powder. I was aiming for a very natural eye look but it turned out to not be very natural but we'll roll with it. Now yes the foundation is set so I'm going to put my Estee Lauder powder. Now that the foundation has set I don't see a lot of glow to the foundation anymore. Now let's put on some blush. Already put it in a palette but I believe that this blush is the Milani one. Not too sure. So this is how the foundation is looking like. Set with powder. The blush and the powder actually set really well on top of this foundation. It still looks amazing on my skin. I just feel like my pores over here are getting a little bit highlighted maybe because when I put the powder it really mattified the foundation but we'll see if it lighten up a bit in a couple of hours but for now let's do the photography test. Fourth hour update, the camera might not be picking it up, but this foundation is turning gray on me. It's so weird. You can see it better on my photo on natural light using my phone, but it really kept my oil at bay. I'm just missing some foundation on my nose, but the coverage on the other parts of my face are still okay. Eight hour update, I was out and about and we went to a Japanese barbecue grill and my face was very exposed to the heat from grilling but the foundation actually really stayed put. I'm a little oily and the coverage is thinning out but it's really thinning out gracefully. There's no separation, there's no cakiness, it's not settling on any lines. I'm just not comfortable on how it looks gray on my skin. I'm actually filming my pros and cons the next day because last night while I was doing the foundation review, me and my girlfriends went out and it just drained me that I can't film anymore after that. Now that I've tried this foundation for 8 hours actually more, I will give this foundation a rating of 3.5 stars out of 5. Which is surprising because a lot of people are really loving this foundation. It has 14.9 thousand reviews in Sephora and it has 4 out of 5 stars rating. I get the hype with this Too Faced foundation. It's a good foundation but the reason why I'm only giving this a 3.5 stars out of 5 is because of the oxidation. It gave me like a grayish look. Like it's not very visible on photos and videos but and also not very visible on studio light. But when I'm checking myself on natural light and looking at the mirror, I can really see that gray cast on my face. And it just didn't make me feel and look beautiful when I was wearing this foundation. I also didn't like that throughout the day, it actually really laid flat on my face. It really turned into a matte finish. But because it is very matte and it really laid flat on my face, not that it really highlighted my texture, but it just didn't give me a better looking skin. I don't think it's a bad foundation. It really evened up my skin tone. It gave me a good coverage and it has a good wear time. But it just didn't have that wow factor for me. Especially since I have been trying a lot of foundations. There are a lot of matte foundations that would still give me that good looking skin and not lay flat on my face. That would still look very good on videos and photos. So sadly, this is not my favorite amongst the other foundations that I have reviewed in my series. But I'm very hopeful for my next foundation review because in my next foundation review, I'll be trying out the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. And that foundation also has good reviews on Sephora. So I'm very hopeful that that will be the icing on the cake for my last review in this series. So watch out for that. If you are enjoying my content so far, make sure to like this video. Make sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll always be updated once a new video is out. Thank you so, so much again for watching. I'll see you on my next one.